My name is Daniel Cumulato. I own a business called Ghost Walks and we do tours throughout the uh, city of Hamilton and Niagara. One of the places that we feature is the Hermitage Ruins behind me here now. I got into this business like back in 1999. I helped found a group called Haunted Hamilton. It was a paranormal group and we focused in on the most haunted locations throughout the entire city and this one just was on our radar right from the very beginning. And of course we wanted to do the tours and tell its history and of course the ghost stories and the most famous legend in Ancaster which is associated with it. The Hermitage Ruins is very well known in Ancaster because of the legend associated with it. Now this legend dates back to the 1800s, um, has to do with the Hermitage House that was part of the generation of Otto Ives and the legend of Lover's Lane. So because of that legend, uh, kids come out to this place to uh, tell ghost stories, try and scare each other. It's almost been a rite of passage, uh, I'd have to say at least for maybe five or six decades that's been going on in this uh, in this town. And one of the main reasons why the Hermitage is so known, at least from the ghostly standpoint, is a famous legend. A legend days back, I don't even know how long, in, in the town of Ancaster, and it's become sort of a um, a thing for the kids of Ancaster right back in the 1950s. They would be coming out here to, to prove that they were brave enough to meet the ghost of William Black. So where does the ghost of William Black come from? Well, it's the legend of Lover's Lane. And it was during the time of Colonel Otto Ives and his niece. Well, it was actually his wife Magdalene, it was her niece, but he saw her not just as a niece, but as a daughter. And in turn wanted to make sure that she was married off to the right man, especially the right family to continue that connection, the higher up end of society. And as she's doing this, uh, going out on different dates with different men, it's not working. And they believe one of the reasons why it's not working is because she had eyes for somebody else. She had eyes for William Black, who was the servant to the Ives family. Now, of course, if you uh, watch the shows like Downton Abbey, you would know that this is not acceptable, expect, especially back in those times. So the two of them were both in love, and they had to sneak around to secret areas of the woods here to spend time together without Otto Ives ever finding out. But the funny thing is, it wasn't the niece that started to get worried about this. It was William Black. He was nervous and he felt guilty about hiding the secret from his, uh, his, boss, William, uh, his boss, Otto Ives. Now, yes, it was his boss, but he saw the man as a father and it was eating him inside to do this to him. Now, he told the niece about his plans. He said, I want to tell him everything. I want to ask for your hand in marriage. And she knew what would happen, but she didn't say anything. She just let him go. And one night, William Black is sitting with Otto Ives in the parlor of the house. They're discussing the events of the next day and there's a lull in the conversation. I'm sure at that point he would come forth and talking through all that nervousness and, and say to Otto, I, I love your niece, we've been together for a while and, and I'd like to have her hand in marriage. And I'm sure Otto Ives didn't agree with that. I'm sure he got angry. Now they say he ended William Black's employ after that, telling him to get out of the house, to get off the land and to never come back. Now, William Black would go back into the carriage house where he slept. Now, the very next day, Otto Ives would come out to retrieve William Black, and yes, he was fired, but maybe felt a little bit bad for how he had treated him and wanted to help him along his way. So he goes to the carriage house and opens the door, thinking that William Black would be up sleeping in the loft, but then seeing out of the corner of his eye, William Black's lifeless body hanging from the rafters. Now, understand back then, it wouldn't have been a scary sight for Otto Ives, a military man, no. This disgusted him because it was somebody throwing God's gift back in their face. For what? For love? He didn't see that as a true purpose. So he would cut William Black down, letting his body land in a waiting manure cart, take the cart up to where Sulphur Springs and Lover's Lane meet today. And he would dig a large hole in that land, dropping William Black in with the noose still around his neck. And they say that's where he remains. And that's the reason why people see his ghost, especially nights of the full moon, walking down the winding road leading to the hermitage ruins, usually holding a lantern to illuminate himself. And they say he's looking for his lost love. Now, 
I had an experience here, a ghostly experience, uh, leading these tours for many, many years and being in the paranormal for as long as I've been. It's surprising how few real ghostly experiences I've had. And one of the main ones was here at the Hermitage. Uh, I haven't seen a lot over the years, and this is the only place where I saw something I couldn't explain. And that's in over 15 years of doing this. Now, I was at the end of one of the tours. I'm standing in the front. I let the group mingle around the back here for a little bit. And after a few minutes, it's time to go. So I come walking around the side of the ruins to tell everyone it's time, and I call out to them. And I see two people walking towards me in the field here. And I think nothing of it. I just assume they're part of the group. So I call out to them. I say, it's time to go. They ignore me. Now they're walking up even closer. I call out a second time. And after I called out the second time, they turned and they veered into the forest, the trees directly behind me there. Now, it was pretty light out here because of a full moon. I could see them as plain as day. But of course, it was dark and dangerous there. I was afraid they'd fall and hurt themselves. So I run up behind them and I shine a flashlight into the woods. It's only seconds behind them and they're gone as it vanished. Now, after this was done, I had a couple of other experiences that made me think I wasn't crazy. Uh, well, actually, the first one made me think I was a little because I would uh, ask my coordinator after it was done what happened from her experience. Now, she heard me call out the first time to them and tell them it was time to go. So she comes running around the ruins thinking somebody got hurt and she watches me call out the second time. And when I call out the second time, she said I was calling out to an empty field, even though I could still see these two people in front of me. Now, as well, uh, even though it was bright in the field, for some reason I couldn't see the clothing they were wearing or see their faces. It was as if they were two shadows walking arm in arm towards me. Now, I did feel a little bit crazy at that point, but thankfully I looked into the history of this place before checking myself into the psychiatric hospital. And uh, I'll tell you, it, was, it made me at ease to know that uh, behind me here in the woods, it's not nothing. There's something back there. It's the original well to the Hermitage family farm here. So I do believe that I did see something ghostly. I also believe it was residual energy, the energy of people walking back and forth from that well over and over again. And I was just in the right place at the right time to witness it. As I mentioned, uh, the legend kind of draws people in here uh, at the wrong time a little bit. I mean. It's okay, people come out and want the ghost stories, and things do happen here often. Sometimes people come out for the wrong reason, and uh, sometimes the ruins will get hurt a little bit. But with the tours themselves, it gives an opportunity to come here at night legally. And we've had many experiences on these tours that prove this to be a haunted location. Uh, one of the most common has been just the feeling of negativity. Now, if you get somebody who's sensitive to that kind of energy, they could come out into a place like this and they feel heavy to them. And if you know about uh, this being a conservation area and the fact that vet animals are very rarely out here at night, and the energy being raised at night kind of uh, lends to that. Uh, another experience has happened to a few people uh, starting from a few years ago uh, in the trees in the distance. Uh, they said that they've seen lights flickering above the trees. Now this is also something that's common when you have a buildup of a certain type of energy is it might transfer into itself as being lights uh, flashing in the darkness. And the fact that we're out here in the pitch black night when we do those tours, uh, you could see them even easier. Uh, so that kind of energy remains now as well. People have had experiences with full apparitions. Now my experience with seeing those two people walking told, towards me is a perfect example of that. Uh, we had another occasion when a lady came on a tour and the entire night she was being plagued by this bad energy and uh, it would make her feel sick. Uh, at one point it was pulling on the back of her collar. She said she was feeling off balance like she was going to fall over. And when they were walking back towards the parking lot, she said uh, to her right hand side in the woods, she noticed the figure of a man walking in the darkness. and. She thought she was going crazy, but uh, thankfully our ghost guide that night, James, he stops the tour. She hadn't said anything to him and says to the entire group, I don't know if I'm going crazy, but I can see there's a man following us in the woods right there. And at this point, the young lady, she knew that everything she had experienced throughout the entire night was real. 
So usually around the energy, around the apparitions, and the lights, and of course the uh, void animal life in a conservation area all prove how haunted this place truly is. Now, if you're interested in coming on one of the ghost walks here at the Hermitage Ruins, uh, you can go to our website, ghostwalks.com, and you look, there'll be a little icon for it with all the information. Uh, coming up around Halloween, we have two more dates for the season on Saturday, October 18th, and of course, on the Day of the Dead, or the, the Night of the Dead, Saturday, November 1st.